Hi, everybody. It's good to be back. Let's have a great week. Brock, Kevin, how are you? Shahab, everyone doing okay? So a lot of people asked, uh, you know, what was going on with me, and I just went to get a haircut. I needed uh, three days to make it up to Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills to get my hair cut. So all's good now. I know you can't tell. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's great to be back in the saddle, everybody. I, there's some uh, interesting action today. I know our crew is going to help you this week with their educated eyes. And here's just... Uh, uh, Every day, a bit better. Alexander, thank you very much. So uh, let's get to it, and let's get me out. Let, let's get me out of here. All right. So I was I came in Saturday looking at this formation ascending triangle. So my bias actually was to the upside because ascending means you know a reversal formation to the upside. Ascending triangles are bullish normally uh, although you know it can go either way this could have been like a flag we're getting a breakdown thank you Amira so we're getting a breakdown I didn't get a uh, long euro or anything but you know eg is working so again euros your preferred long over cable and there's uh euro has like a little bit of a neckline here at 113. 40. All you know, for a few weeks, uh, Euro has really done nothing negative. Sideways, sideways, sideways. When you look at this, and this line right here may end up being a bull flag, which measures you know well above this high. So dollar under pressure equals risk on. Uh, one thing I will say about the S&Ps here uh, that we didn't do Friday and I didn't notice till I was talking to some people Saturday is that even with this high Friday um, and all the strength in NASDAQ, we still had not taken out the high from June 20th, you know, right around the uh, solstice. And they finally did. It was, I believe, uh, the high there was 68. So we're doing it now. And actually, I'm going to be looking for maybe a turnaround Tuesday short here. Of course, it's not going to be doing anything wrong, but um, until we, you know, at first start taking out 3,100, but 3,150 should show you see here at new highs. Uh, we're not confirming. It's a one millionth divergence here. Um, gold. I had a nice little break last week. I saw it from the hospital bed right up here. And uh, because I wasn't able to trade it, the gold market, I believe it's gonna give me another chance for a three drive up around 1790 or so this week. And if it can't do it now with a weak dollar, uh, it never will. So this is a time for it to accelerate. Silver outperforming so far today by quite a bit. We'll see if we could take out this 1840 level, trade 1850 in the next few days with a weak dollar. And with all of this going on, you know uh, who really is the weak sister today? Uh, it's WTI. So you have S&Ps up 51 handles. And I drew this line Saturday, right here off these two highs. And so far it's respecting it. But a day like this with S&Ps of 50 handles for WTI to be up 35 cents is not impressive. So this too would be a short candidate for me. Uh, could it take out the highs from the week before at 4160? Possible, but uh, this would be a pretty good market tell if uh, WTI cannot take out the high of the move. Uh, made again, this is uh, June 20th. A lot happened on June 20th uh, around the solstice and the eclipse. A buddy of mine told me there's a comet out there now so it, it, that is going to pass wisdom on to the human race. So maybe I'll start uh, trading even better. So um, again, keep an eye on the gold because something I've been pointing out 
It's going to be very interesting to see what Newmont does. Because when you see Newmont here, it still has an even retrace 61.8. And that's with gold making the, the physical market, making new highs, several new highs in the past few days. So maybe Newmont could get back to here. And if we have a blowout to like 1820, maybe 1786, we'll see. I think we're going to know this week on that. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else I really want to cover. Let the rest of the team do it. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. Silver TLT. Yeah. So that's it. Great to be back. Uh, as far as uh, energy is concerned, uh, we have Shy Girl with us. Tracy will be with us at the top of the hour. Thank you, Brock. And uh, yeah, Tracy actually called the bottom in the dollar at that 9560 level. And I know she's a long term Euro bear. So it's going to be interesting to talk to her about this and um, also what she's seen in the energy patch. So, how are you, Blake? Good to be back in the saddle, buddy. Thanks for uh, covering for me last week. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Got yeah, you, hey, buddy. what's uh, what's going on, Coach? Good to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be uh, it's good to be back. Um, yes, I, I prefer this to uh, watching uh, Bloomberg in the hospital. Y yeah, I, I'm just avoiding the hospital. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, is just uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, it's, yeah. it's 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 a good thing. So <laughs> so um, it's nice to have you back, and um, you know, I would I would say. You didn't miss a whole lot. I mean, it. You know, the the there wasn't um like it, like if you look at the euro last week, we just spent the whole week consolidating and yeah. Uh, but but today we're trying to break higher. I mean, and, right. and that's that's the thing that we need to uh, be aware of. As you can see, that the euro dollar is trying to break out of. You know, this is the bull flag pattern. Yeah. So you know, we got to be respectful of that. I, I want to see. Uh, you know, obviously the euro's popping as soon as New York stepped in. They start buying up uh, euros or selling dollars, but um, seeing how we react going into the open today, seeing seeing what's going to happen uh, here is going to be interesting because it's not just it, you know you can see the euros trying to I mean this is trying to base right, which mm -hmm. in my opinion looks pretty bullish. I mean here's your here's your daily chart right in the euro, but. You, you you know, I look around at some other currencies too, Dale, and I, I'm a little concerned because if you look at like the Aussie, for example, uh, the Aussie dollar, you know, we tried to push up against resistance here and we're showing failure, right? Kiwi, um, this is a multi-year trend line. And I know I, 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 I tweeted the chart today, but we, you know, are just probing this multi-year trend line, kind of struggling with it. Uh, dollar Canadian, for all intents and purposes, the dollar Canadian has not really sold off. I mean, it's yeah. it's holding up relatively well. It's all and euro, buddy. What's that? It's pretty much all euro. That's dollar. right now. It it, it yeah. is really the euro that's well, the euro and and uh, you know, there's there's some other pairs out there too. I mean, if you look at the weakness and like the dollar Swiss, but but oh, yeah. really, it's mostly just the euro dollar. You're right, it, and it's not saying that it won't bleed into other currencies but if you look around i mean you know just look at look at you know all the currencies that are on on my you know on the right hand side here and it's mostly the euro that is that is moving at the moment um the norwegian krona is down a little bit and but you know in all actuality it's it's it, it is the euro uh we do have um, the U.S. dollar, Mexican peso, you know, some of these emerging market currencies are, are a little under pressure. But um, like I said, it's, you know, if you're if you're out there just selling dollars across the board, um, you know, you're probably going, OK, you know, I, I see that the euro is moving. And, and by the way, the euro is I mean, it, it is really trying to trying to make its move here. And what we'll do, let me just do this really quick. Um, uh, probably, well, first of all, we are above like the 78% retracement, almost the 88% retracement, which will come in at 113.30 uh, here, um, you know, with the euro. But 
I think if we go like this, okay, so here's the, here's the top of that, here's the bottom of that, um, you know, we're at back at the 618 retracement just like right now. So, um, you know, is it, you know, could the Euro stall right at these levels? Sure. But I, I, what, what I, what I'd really be more interested in right now is to see on a dip, if the euro dollar dips back towards 113, how does the euro dollar act on a dip back towards 113? You know what I mean? That that I think is uh, is going to be key today. It's hard for me to chase the euro right at these levels, but I do think that um, you know if if we do dip, I want to see you know try to buy it on a dip and see how it how it reacts there. And uh, you can see the euro really acting well against other currencies too. I mean, you got the euro. Here's the euro pound. Um, Euro pounds, you know, strengthening. Euro Aussie is coming off of the lows. Um, Euro New Zealand uh, come, came off the came off some support here. So really, a lot of Euro crosses are also looking pretty decent right now. Um, Dale, you're you're pointing out gold. Not sure if he's around, but um, but he was pointing out gold a little earlier, and I and I have to I have to say that you know that's something that I mentioned on the week ahead video. You had to listen. To I'm here, Blake. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, you had to listen towards the end of the week ahead video, but you know I was just mentioning how gold. I mean, it is it's holding up really well. Uh, yeah. I, I you know I, I how many people are trying to sell gold right now? Short gold because you know it's it's not going higher. So it's just, you know, it's sitting up near its highs and um, you know, how many people are just trying to fade gold right now thinking that positioning's, you know, too much and yada, yada, yada. But I'll tell you what gold's, you, you know, gold's you holding a measured up there. Move up there, Blake. Like what, uh, what do you have a measured that? move? Do you have a measured move uh, for a target at new highs or something? You know, I, I don't, other than, you know, we have this, I guess the 161% extension oh, of this okay. move would, you know, take us to 1860. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's really, you know, I can't, I can't say that, oh, well, you know what we should do. Let's take this and let's put in the 88% uh, retracement. It comes in at 1823. I mean, it just seems to me that could do that that it could do that because it's just not like i said it's just not pulling back and and um you know as i pointed out in the week ahead video you know as long as we're staying above the 1760 this like pink line right here i don't think there's any reason to be on the short side of the of, of gold um you know, we start breaking, breaking back through some of the support, you know, some of these lows here from last week, then, then you, you know, you start getting a little concerned, but for right now, I mean, it's holding up pretty well. And I, I don't, I don't see any, I don't see any reason to be a seller of gold. And, um, you know, I keep going back to the argument that I had from, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, for the last several weeks or months, we've been, you know, talking about this is, you know, as, as the Fed has, you know, induced the market with so much liquidity, that it's the same, same um, actions that they took during the, you know, great financial crisis. And, you know, as you plow that much liquidity in the market, if you look back at, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010 and gold, those were, those were, you know, times where the market just took off and gold just rallied so substantially because of all the liquidity, excess liquidity that central banks have, uh, have added, you know, to the, to the system. And, and that same thing's happening right now. So, you know, what's to say that gold cannot trade towards twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars in the next, yeah. you know, you know, year or two, I, I think it's entirely possible. Right. Yep. And, and if you, th you, th you think about it, um, you know, if you think about 2000, uh, you know, th those years, 2009, 2010, I mean, look at what the Aussie did, you know, look at what the Euro did, you know, the Euro, um, well, I mean, you, you, the Euro actually, you know, just kind of been meandering around. I think Euro had, Europe had its own problems at that, at that time, but a lot of these commodity currencies, you know, look at the Kiwi, um, you know, 
the Kiwi rip from, uh, we went from, well, let's just say, you know, post financial crisis, you know, we we're at the 50 some cent range all the way up to the 80 some cent range. So why can't that happen again um, with these commodity currencies? Why can't they break out and break higher? Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the, I think the, the risk is here that we start to see, you know, some, some of these big, you know, some of these moves really start to take place. Um, whether you're talking about, um, you know, whether you're talking about, um, uh, you know, the Aussie, the Kiwi, the, the Euro, I mean, everything just looks like it's going to, it's going to go. I mean, the Aussie looks like it's going to break higher too. So, you know, I think things are, you know, looking, um, uh, more and more like that we're going to see dollar weakness. Oh, look at gold just hit new highs as we are speaking. I mean, what's what's going to stop what's going to stop these you know the the dollar continuing to weaken and you know these commodity currencies to break out one of the commodity currencies that i think we should be watching pretty carefully here is going to be the dollar canadian because the dollar canadian hasn't really um it, it's weakened but it hasn't really you know started to weaken substantially and i think that a move below the 200 day moving average, you know, which would be the lows of the session that, that would probably, you know, accelerate some losses with the, uh, with the, with the, you know, um, the Canadian dollar. I mean, you know, look at that 200 day moving average. We break through that and I think we will trade, you know, lower in this particular pair. So I think that's something that, um, that we should be paying attention to, right? So yep. anyway, um, I you know just just some things that I'm I'm looking at this morning. Uh, uh, the dollar Mexican peso continues to be pretty weak here. Oh, this is this is one of those things that I was looking at. Uh, you know, speaking of measured move, Dale. You know, A B equals C D. I mean, you you know, you're talking about the dollar Mexican peso heading down towards uh, you know 19 again. And that would be realistic after only a 38% retracement. I mean, that seems, that seems pretty, you know, pretty doable. So, um, anyway, right back just, to where it started. What's that? Right back to where it started, uh, in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. A lot of things, uh, you know, that would take it right back to, you know, like the COVID crash never happened. Yeah. Yeah. I market. mean, um, for, for sure. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I look around Dale and it just, you know, with, with the way that stocks are acting and by the way, the equity markets, I mean, you look at stocks, we're you know, still in, we're trying to break higher and break out territory. Look, here's the, here's the NASDAQ. That was my NASDAQ chart from uh, was the, the um, uh, chart of the day actually on Thursday but I made it real simple, you know, while you're above here, you're bullish, you know, right. <laughs> that's it. It's just, it is what it is. You know, like here's your here's, bull bear line on that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all, you know, we're, we're just in, we're in breakout territory. So why fight it? Just, you know, let it, you know, let it, let it continue to play out. And, you know, um, uh, eventually um, we're going to see, you know, things catch up with the market. But right now, I mean, as the market continues to break out, you know, why fight it? So, you know, I look at, I look at currencies like, um, you know, here's the Kiwi dollar. We're, we're probing this, uh, this multi-year trend line. I actually think it's going to break out. And if you think about like a breakout above uh, 65, what is this? 65, 88, well, let's just call it 66 cents. That's a major, major breakout for the Kiwi. And you take, you take, you know, the Kiwi and the Aussie, these, these are not, they're not going down. Right. It's kind of like the, the whole, the whole adage with, uh, with gold, if it's not going to go down, there's only one other direction for it to go. If the Aussie and the Kiwi are not going down, there's only one other direction for these currencies to go. So anyway, I, I, I think you gotta, you gotta, they, they've rejected some pretty big resistance levels. Like, you know, I was pointing out on Twitter, Today, if you look at the Kiwi, this is a multi-year trend line. Well, what if it breaks the multi-year trend line? Where does that put the Kiwi dollar? 
I would assume that puts the Kiwi dollar somewhere up in these levels if we do break out, you know, uh, whether it's 69 cents, 70 cents, who knows, you know, it's, but, um, you know, I think you gotta, you gotta consider these are, it's, it's the dollar weakness is, is pretty real at this point, right? So anyway, um, you know, just some food for thought on, on how I'm feeling here. And, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm really looking at, you know, some of these commodity currencies and, and the one thing that's going to get me more excited about them, like the Aussie dollar, uh, uh, breaking out per se would be, you know, watching the, um, uh, watching the, um, uh, U.S. dollar Canadian. If the U.S. dollar Canadian can really start to uh, show some weakness, I think that'll that'll uh, just add fuel to the fire to some of these you know commodity currencies. In in my opinion, so um, yeah. Again, they're just you know I think that there's just things that we we should be paying uh, close attention to. Uh, the euro dollar definitely looks bullish at least at this moment, but obviously um, you know we're going to have to see a breakout above above the 114 and change for it to become really, really bullish. But it is, you know, it's, it's building some momentum here. And I don't know if I'd really want to stand in the, in the way of it. Uh, what I, what I will prefer to do, especially with like the Euro and is, is looking for dips to buy today. So if I can get a dip that back down towards 113, I'll find that more um, attractive to be a buyer down there. But you know, who knows if we're going to get it. You know, who knows if we're going to get those types of pullbacks. Look at the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. This is something that we should also uh, be looking at as well. I mean, we've given back all of these gains. And, um, you know, this is we're below the 200 day moving average. And the fact of the matter is we start breaking below nine. I mean, the, the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona could completely reverse. And if you look at, you know, longer term, um, you know, this is one of those. Uh, you know, squeezed everybody, the entire market out and then, you know, reversing hard. It's uh, it could be you know, quite a massive reversal. And I, and I just think that the, the dollar just continues to look, you know, pretty vulnerable at this point. So, um, but you know, uh, uh, I'd like to get actually Steve and Stelios opinion here and I'm going to bring Steve in because Steve was in the chat room today uh, talking about the euro and about the you know the the strength of the euro dollar. What's up, uh, Steve? Good morning, mate. <clears throat> Good morning. Everybody. How you doing? Good. How have you been? Good. Uh, St is Stelios here this morning? Nope. Good no morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> hey, oh, Stel, yeah. are you back in town now? I'm back in town. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome home. Um, you know, uh, Steve, you were in the chat room a little earlier today and you were talking about how bullish the, uh, the Euro looks. How do you feel about the Euro and, and what it's doing here at, at these levels? Great to hear <laughs> all of you guys. Good to be here, man. Hey, hey Gooch. Nice to have hey, you here. Steve. Oh, Steve's here. Okay. I'm going to take that break now, Blake. It was good to hear. <laughs> Blake, good to hear you, Blake. No, I'm kidding you, Steve. I'll be back in a couple. Um, so I think nothing has changed since we got the date on, uh, on Thursday. Um, you know, we, we said back then after the data that, you know, the most likely scenario is that that's going to be a catalyst to actually get, uh, you know, another leg lower for the dollar and probably another leg higher for risk assets, because of course those two more or less go hand in hand. Um, Thursday, perhaps due to the uh three days uh that we had ahead uh we didn't see that much of a movement and then mentioning the fact that we had like a three-day weekend because you know how things have been lately i mean lately within three days who knows what can happen what kind of news you can get uh what kind of a catalyst you might have so i'm i, I mean i'm not blaming people for not wanting to jump um on positions ahead of you know three days that you want uh, be able to do something about them uh, but you know since the weekend was quite um, uh, you know uneventful uh, it's more than obvious that you know they want to jump on the saddle now and you know ride this move now we're going to see how, how long it's going to last but you know it seems to be happening hello Blake? did we just lose Steve no I'm here 
Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I thought I thought we lost you there for a second. Yeah. So yeah. um yeah yeah so we you know I I I I again I you know I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at the the dollar here and the dollar just looks like it's going to be getting abused and uh, and um, Stelios we have your precious metals that are stronger today gold that's trying to break out how do you what what do you make of all this uh, this dollar weakness that we're seeing well I think it's all risk on risk on dollar down end of story and we've said this for days and weeks so. It continues. Uh, the world continues to think that, uh, you know, rightly or wrongly, that things are going to be back to normal. Um, and uh, equities rally, the dollar crashes and, well, crashes, sells off and metals uh, rally, which makes sense. I, you know, you know me, I'm a bull in metals. I have been and I've been riding it for a while. I think we will get a correction because, you know, DSI and uh, positioning is getting quite bullish now. But uh, my opinion, any kind of decent correction uh, is a buy, uh, you know, no doubt about it in my mind. So um, um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, necessarily convinced that we're going to get a very decent one, Celia. I mean, we've seen periods of time in the past that gold moved for a substantial uh, period of time, you know, in a one-way street, in essence. Um, I mean, just. You know, think about it. Since 2001, for example, uh, gold moved all the way to 2006 before seeing, you know, a first decent correction. Then after this correction was over, we rallied again from the end of 2006 to um, 2008 without any decent correction, so on and so forth. So, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, we're going to get pullbacks, but, you know, are they going to be enough for people to consider them you know, buying opportunities, <laughs> not necessarily under this environment. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I hope we get a good uh, dip, but uh, I'm not sure we'll get it. I think the, the scenario where we will get a good dip is, like I've said before, if equities have a proper leg lower and there's a little bit of panic, then I think we'll see gold and silver get uh, smashed a little bit, just like they did in March. Yeah, well, we'll see if we'll see if that that is even possible right now. You know, I I. I'd have to mention that seasonality as we know it is kind of thrown out the window this year, obviously because of the pandemic and the, 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 the work patterns of, you know, most of wall street or the financial industry right now, everybody's just kind of in front of their computers, whether at home or in different parts of the, the country uh, or in different parts of the world, excuse me. So, um, you know, we can't rely uh, on, um, on, on, you know, the normal seasonal pattern. So as of right now, equity markets still look bullish and it still looks like uh, that, that we're recovering. And we're just not very far off of the, um, off of the highs here. I mean, look at the S&P, the s and is in breakout territory right now. And the pullbacks are, um, you know, very minor at this point. You know, the, you can see this breakout is still holding on an hourly basis. So, um, well, guys, we have, uh, you know, we have um, today, I think, let me, let me just take a look really quick. Um, whoops, let's go over to our calendar. Today, we have some Canadian data. Uh, we have also ISM coming out a little bit later. So, um, you know, maybe some things that might move the needle, especially with the dollar Canadian. I, I'm, I'm really, you know, kind of scratching my head here with the dollar Canadian holding up as well as it is. Um, but as I mentioned during the week ahead video as well, if the dollar does turn and we start to see some dollar buying, this is the one currency pair that I will be looking at because it has been holding up better than, you know, um, a lot of these other, you know, commodity currencies and whatnot. So anyway, um, I'm going to pass it over to you two gentlemen, uh, Stelios, welcome home. Dale, really good to have you back. Uh, Steve. It's always great to hear Steve's voice. So, um, is and well, is <laughs> what a jerk. Uh, anyway, for those, for those of you, the, for those of you that uh, that that um, you know haven't tried out Forex Analytics, make sure you do. It's it's only one dollar for ten days to try us out, and then also visit our webinar sponsor, uh, which is going to be uh, Forest Park FX because they will help you find a broker that's best suited for your needs. So um, make sure you visit with them. And you can get to them on the reimbursement page through um, through uh, on forexanalytics.com. So, uh, 
Steve Stelios, I'm gonna pass it over to you guys and Dale. Um, okay, and yeah, and and good luck this week, everybody. I'll see you on the the uh, daily roundup in about four hours. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Blake. Great to hear you again, Blake. Bye, bye, mate. Okay, I'm you. back yeah. to hear Steve and uh, well and Stelios. Yeah. So our friend hey, Sam Dave. is asking. Hey. Our friend Sam, Sam is asking, could second quarter earnings drop equities theoretically they should but you know if if earnings um, made any difference nowadays tesla wouldn't be at uh, you know 1200 or whatever wherever they are so i think markets are a little bit crazy at the moment people are trying to front run the fed because we know the fed's buying everything uh, literally yeah. everything from corporate well, bonds to yeah yeah, yeah. and um, i was watching a video somebody uh, from the chat room posted the video of a guy explaining you know how what the fed does how they buy stuff and everything and apparently they're buying corporate bonds uh, from certain uh, companies including apple which yeah, apple apple really needs need some I mean, help well, yeah, uh, it, it just i mean they sense. only have like 100 billion of liquid assets we, we should really help them out yeah, I think the cash, they're sitting on like 60 billion of cash or something like that. But anyway, um, you know, it makes sense. 50 you know, billion they, of uh, cash and another 50 billion of stock. Stella. There you go. There you go. Okay. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I understand people saying, look, you know, the Fed is, in, is here. They've got our back. They're going to buy everything. So uh, with all this liquidity, you get ahead of them and forget about it. You know, just open your eyes in 10 years time. You're probably going to be doing okay. But um, then on the other hand, you know, you read... Um, you know, I was reading the, the WHO, they said that we had the highest one day uh, increase in infections since the beginning. So, you know, Iran and uh, uh, Pakistan and Indonesia and, and countries like that are reporting huge days of um, infection. So that scares me. And, uh, you know, for me, the, the, if we get new highs in the S&P or if even if we get new all time highs, that will probably put things so, um, how should I say it, so at such an extreme in terms of positioning and sentiment because people say, look, equities are never falling ever again, end of story. And that's when they're going to start falling, in my opinion. So the Valuations are already like the second yeah. highest we ever had in history with the only highest reading being in what everybody accepts as, you know, probably the biggest financial bubble of recent times, right? Yeah, the tech bubble, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. And our friend Sean is saying Ray Dalio said the stock market is no longer a free market. I unfortunately I agree. You know, my, uh, yeah, and and unfortunately, not unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not only the stock market that's no longer a market, right? <laughs> yeah, they're they're influencing everything. So you know, to front run the Fed makes sense. I still think we'll see a leg lower eventually, but uh, and you know, I, I have no equity positions, and I'm sitting here feeling free silly but on the other hand you know i'm long silver i'm long the norwegian krona which trade with risk so i'm happy with those um but i am looking to buy equities but not here so you know if we get the drop we get it if not i will reconsider you know i've been wrong in the past i might be wrong again so um you know for me i you know it's the whole situation with the virus uh, the market's basically discounting that uh, everything's going to be back to normal everything's fine yes you get the odd uh, problem with uh, unemployment being higher but this is only short term and we're going to go back to normal and there will be a vaccine at some point and then you know we'll forget about it i hope it's uh, it turns out this way i really do but for the moment i'm not convinced um what else is happening china chinese equities smashing day to day uh, up five percent or something like that so best day in, in years from what i read and um did you say uh, about chinese equities tell you yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was looking at the chart early um, in the morning. Actually, Chinese equities have gained, uh, let me find them, have gained more than 10% I measured within the last three Recession. trading days. Yes, yeah. Yeah. more than 10%. And, you know, uh, admittedly, you know, uh, a clearly bullish breakout here. I mean, this formation yes. lower was you know very well behaved it was within a channel and look what happened once we broke through the channel i mean yeah, yeah that's a massive explosive move higher right yes just yeah, look at the daily uh, rsi at 88 yeah and the yuan is uh, appreciating as well plummeting yeah so the, the, the USD dollar, yuan yeah, yeah the yeah, USD yuan yeah. is plummeting yes plummeting yeah yeah and um 
you know, risk on, risk on, risk on, end of story. Uh, the other interesting thing was, um, you must have read a few days ago where the UK said, uh, you know, following the Hong Kong um, uh, developments, they said, look, if, you, if Hong Kong residents want, they can get uh, UK citizenship. You know, basically they opened the door to Hong Kong residents and the Chinese today said, you know, if you want to make an enemy, <laughs> you're going to make an enemy here. So they're, you know, they're not playing the Chinese and they're, they're going to, um, uh, how should I say, they're going to, they're going to try and take what they're, what is theirs. <laughs> but, um, you know, the UK are maybe opening another front <laughs> of, um, of uncertainty. So, you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how that's going to pan out, but uh, definitely something keeping an, uh, worth keeping an eye on. The pound is actually not doing much today. They, it is a little bit weaker against the euro, a little bit weaker against, sorry, a little bit stronger than against the dollar, but really not doing that much. Um, but like Blake said, Norway is uh, doing really well. And, you know, if you put things in perspective, you know, I'm short euro Norway and um, I have been short from quite a bit below here, but I added quite a bit higher, you know, above 11, 11, what was it, 11.50, I think, the, the, the highest short I had. And I've taken some profits on that. But, uh, you know, if you look at the long-term uh, ranges of dollar Norway and euro Norway, we're still really, really high. And oh, yeah, absolutely. If you consider the economy, the Norwegian economy, and how they're, uh, you know... Yeah, the how, how is still very run, cheap. It's very cheap, yeah. And yeah. uh, so, you know, I'm going to keep that. And if we get a, um, an, a risk-off run, which means that the, the krona is going to... Uh, sell off. I'm gonna be buying more Krona. Uh, pos- yeah, I'm still short. Possibly. Yeah. Both Euro Nok and USD Nok, and you know, I have no intention of letting them go. I mean, I see no reason. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And um, so, um, what else is is there to say? Not that much, really. Data. We had very little data today. Actually, we had UK construction PMI, which was, I mean, if you look at the the, the jump in the number, it, it went down from the 50s or whatever, 45, 50. It went down to 28.9 uh, amid the coronavirus crisis, and now went back to 55.3. So again, we have to remember how this is. It doesn't mean we're back to where we were in February. It just means yeah, it just not, means that we're not contracting we're not anymore. Not contracting anymore. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right. So you know that's good. Maybe. But as long as we're not expanding in all these indices that uh, are counted with the midpoint being at 50, it yeah. means that we remain in the suppressed post, um, you know, COVID uh, crisis levels. Yes. yes, exactly. You know, if you have one reading of 28 like we had, we need quite a few readings of above 50 to get back yeah, to, where to you get were. back to where you were. Yes, yeah. uh, exactly. So just, exactly just, like that. We need to make sure we understand how the numbers are being calculated. Um, yeah, and you know, it's index. I mean, there are indexes that have you know di- different methodology. So you know, we need to know which one is what. Absolutely. And we have uh, what do we have today. We have ISM non-manufacturing PMI in uh, in the US expected fifty. Which is expected flat. Yeah, yeah. more or less. At f- yeah, fifty fifty point one to be exact. So you know. Yeah, and given given how economies are opening up a little bit, it it kind of makes sense to see. Yeah, it number, might even be a bit. Deteriorate. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, might it, even be a bit. Exactly. Yeah. So it makes sense. The question is, what happens? You know, six months from now, that's the big question. So you know, we're, we're gonna have to wait and see. Indeed. Indeed. Otherwise, uh, all very quiet. And um, do we have anything big this week? I can't remember. But uh, oh, we have the RBA uh, tomorrow. So that might be interesting. That might give us uh, a few pointers on what's happening, but uh, nothing else data-wise. Now the central bank game is whoever is not overly dovish is treated that like they've been hawkish. <laughs> so you know, if the RBA doesn't double down or whatever, yeah. Um, pre- Perhaps also that is you know the reason why we haven't even seen a bigger move out of this triangle here in the Aussie. The market is likely to be expecting, you know, uh, a signal from the RBA that, you know, it's okay to keep appreciating from here. So, you know, let's see how it goes. In any case, you know, this is a bullish breakout from a from the recent consolidation, and you know, from a technical perspective, I think it clearly points out to the next upside um, target, which is this confluence of the 61.8% FIB and this horizontal uh, support resistance area 71.30 to 71.50, quite a nice area of resistance. Um, 
I don't really see any reason from a technical perspective, perspective why we won't uh, make it up there. Uh, you know, Kiwi has made the same type of move. Um, Blake already showed the long-term trend line, which I also have it on the weekly. Um, you know, on the daily, the next side um, target is at 67 uh, cents. So, you know, clearly, uh, you know, everything is obviously following, you know, a very similar pattern to what we have in the Aussie, which is, you know, the S&P, which is the risk barometer for um, the global risk barometer in essence. And the S&P broke out at the end of last week. Uh, on, on Wednesday, actually, it broke out. Then on Thursday, we stayed above it. Market was kind of undecided. But today, uh, people seem to be more comfortable in jumping on the wagon and uh, looking for more upside, which is extremely likely. The next upside target is at 32.60. And, you know, there is no technical reason to think that it's, you know, not going to happen. Uh, NASDAQ still overperforming with, you know, by hitting all time highs again and again repeatedly. Uh, now testing this ascending wedges uh, resistance, we do see other side divergence as well. Um, we do have some more space though, uh, because I, I do like this uh, confluence of resistances uh, just above 10,600. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's, it's probably going to be acting as a magnet. IWM clearly, uh, you know, not performing equally well, uh, but, you know, still maintains this uptrend. The rest of the indices, uh, you know, some of them are mirroring like the S&P, like the DAX, for example, is a good example. Um, FTSE trying to do the same thing, although clearly having underperformed in the uh, recent past the um, US indices. Uh, we already talked about, you know, the best performing index today and during the past three trading days, which has been the Shanghai Composite Index. More than 10% gain in three trading days. Um, quite a massive uh, move to the upside. Here it is, vertical, really went vertical. Once it broke through this resistance, it, it really went vertical. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the name of the game and, you know, there's no reason why somebody should fight it. Uh, Nikkei, by the way, seems to be lagging a little bit, but, you know, this also seems to be, uh, in a triangle that's, you know, very, very likely to be resolved with a break higher as well. Um, so, you know, when, when, wherever you look, you see, you know, the same type of patterns or, you know, the inverse type of patterns depends on, you know, if it's um, an instrument that's, you know, correlated to risk on or uh, risk off. Uh, the DXY, obviously, uh, and it, it was inevitable, uh, you know, given that has broken through this uh, corrective rebound. I mean, you know, we kept saying that this rebound in the DXY looked clearly corrective. The only question that was to be answered, as I mentioned last week, is, you know, could the DXY master, uh, you know, the strength to perhaps, you know, push a little bit higher before rolling over, or would it just roll over from there? So now we do have uh, the answer most probably. We've broken through this uh, trend line support from this channel. Channel triangle doesn't really matter because that, you know, how you want to draw it because the trend line support uh, will be the exact same one. Um, so, you know, uh, daily close below it, which is extremely likely unless, you know, something unexpected happens or something unexpected comes through the wires within the day, uh, will confirm that we've begun, you know, another leg lower. I don't really see any reason why we can't, uh, in this next move, retest this 94.65 uh, March uh, low, it seems very, very likely that we uh, will. So, you know, the path of least resistance in, you know, all instruments remains the one that points probably to more dollar uh, weakness, uh, more uh, risk on. And, you know, don't, you know, don't try to just explain it by using logic because, you know, that's, that's not what works at the moment and that, that's not what moves the market. What moves the market for the time being is 
liquidity and the reassurance. Uh, I mean, every single day you see more uh, headlines coming out saying, you know, Trump is considering more fiscal stimulus, uh, monetary uh, authorities are considering more um, monetary stimulus in case of A, B, C. So it's not only what we're getting as we speak, it's, it's also, uh, you know, all the promises that don't worry, you know, even if things roll over once again, we don't mind, we're going to throw at it, you know, as much more stimulus as uh, needed. So, you know, it's all about not letting, um, uh, you know, risk of uh, take grasp of the markets. And the market so far is uh, considering that enough of a promise. Uh, also, you know, keeping in mind uh, past, uh, you know, performance. So, you know, until proven otherwise, uh, that's going to be the path of least resistance. It's more than obvious. So, um, as long as they can print without repercussions, because as I've mentioned many times, in my opinion, this whole uh, thing is going to end uh, once the side effects of printing uh, are now obvious to everybody that are worse to the alternative of not printing, right? Um, we're not there yet, and it might take some time for us to be there yet. So, you know, for the time being, it is what it is. Uh, let me go through some of your questions. I think we have more or less covered the main stuff. Euro pound is bullish. We to sorry, your comment is a little bit confusing, but uh, I'll definitely have a look at Euro pound, and they'll tell you first of all that the Euro pound found support at you know the area you would expect it to find support if it actually wanted to rebound. We talked about that. It was the confluence of the previous resistance area and this ascending channel trend line support. So, so far, so good. If you're bullish, uh, the good news is that the uptrend has not broken yet. Now, that doesn't really change my mind uh, that probably there is not an appealing risk reward in being long anymore. I mean, you know, you had multiple opportunities to do that at much better prices with, you know, much better expectations. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible to even, you know, see a new high. And, you know, you need to respect as long as we're holding this channel, the uptrend. Uh, but needless to say, I, I think it's rather late probably in buying Euro pound here. Uh, I think it's, it's probably um, likely that the next decent move is going to be to the downside. The uptrend, though, remains intact. So, you know, if you're long and you want to remain long or whatever, I mean, I, I definitely can't blame you, right? Somebody is asking about uh, the CNH. Uh, we already mentioned that, but we didn't show the chart. So let me show you. Here's the USD CNH for its standards, because we know it's not a big mover since, you know, it moves around. It actually moves in a band. Um, that the PBOC puts in place every day. Uh, so for its standards, quite a big uh, move lower with uh, the uh, Chinese Yuan strengthening today. Um, out of this triangle, so, you know, I was expecting that, you know, what, we, what, whatever direction we broke from this triangle, we would see some continuation as it seems we broke the downside. So, you know, I think we're going to see some continuation from there. Um, keep in mind that, you know, if you look at the big picture, the big picture says that we are in an uptrend, right? But in shorter time frames, if you look at them, uh, you know, four hour chart, one hour chart, even on the daily, and you focus on the last part of it, I think that in the short to medium term, the path of least resistance, now that we broke through this, is lower, irrespective of the fact that the medium to long term trend remains higher until proven otherwise. So that's my uh, position about the USDC and H. Uh, and yes, we did also, as you mentioned, not only did we slice through the uh, triangle trend line support, we also sliced through this horizontal support area and the 200 daily moving average. So yes, if confirmed on the daily close, which I think it's a very high probability that's going to happen, it's quite a nice bearish development, which, as I said, I think is going to bring more weakness in the USDC and H in uh, the 
um, upcoming uh, days. Okay, China 10-year yield pop uh, up today, which brings global bond up uh, in pulse. I'm not sure you would in plus. I'm not sure you what you want to write there. Chi uh, ah, you meant plus uh, China equity spike up after three soldier candles. Can yeah, in general, Chinese assets are flying, and you know they're showing like amazing risk appetite. No question about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, let's be honest. The name of the game now is who's going to, you know, um, inflate the biggest bubble. It's not about if we are in a bubble, it's about who's going to inflate the biggest one. And it's, it's completely YOLO tactics, you know, like, you know, who cares about what happens tomorrow? Uh, let's get this thing rolling, you know, especially from the U S side, we know that we have the upcoming elections. I personally can't think of any recent politician that wouldn't be solely focused on what's going to happen until the election date. So, you know, that's not like a, uh, a, an attack on Trump because I don't think that, the, you know, any of his predecessors would have done anything different having to do with, you know, focusing on what will increase their chances of getting reelected. That's the big problem in the vast majority of uh, the economies as well that politicians care mostly about the re-election than they care about, you know, what's, you know, what's the good for the economy, the people uh, in the long term. But, you know, this is not something that you can fix or change, uh, you know, overnight. I mean, you know, that's what we have to deal with. And, you know, that that's it. Uh, uh, could Q2 earnings drop equities? Listen. We now have the biggest gap between earnings expectations and uh, actually um, and, and actual uh, stock prices and indices. So, you know, if that wasn't enough to move equities to the downside, I don't think so. I mean, we've already seen this, which which has been one of the strongest correlations, the strongest relationships we've had earning expectations and stock prices. I mean, it has completely gone out of the window. So, you know, there is no guarantee whatsoever. The market is now accepting the fact that, you know, no matter what happens, uh, stocks, you know, will be moving higher. Of course, you know, this is not going to end well. There's no question about it. Uh, but until something changes, you know, the market is going to care less and less about anything that made, made it care um, until like, you know, four months ago. That's that's it. Hi, Steve. What do you think about USD Swiss? What I think about USD Swiss is that USD Swiss has broken to the downside from this triangle, and that's a bearish development, which is the exact opposite of what the Euro USD has done, because we know that the inverse relationship between the Euro USD and USD Swiss is quite strong. So, you know, I think that there is a very high probability that we're going to see continuation in both cases. We're going to see the use this risk continuing lower and we're going to see the euro USD continuing higher. Uh, IBXC, gold, silver, platinum, gold, silver, and platinum. So, gold, you know, nothing, nothing really I, I can add here. I mean, gold consolidate, I mean, gold, gold can't even pull back anymore. Uh, you get some potential big down days. And by the, by the point that in the middle of the day, you get a, you have a candlestick that looks very ugly, buyers step in and, you know, the gold might close unchanged or by leaving behind like a spinning top, which is an indecision candlestick, and then it, it moves forward. So, you know, gold almost tagged last week my first upside target since we broke through the triangle, which was 1791. We almost made it there. Um, then uh, E for most probably when we slice through that, uh, I, I'm looking at the confluence of resistances at 1823, 1824. So that's my next upside target. And I really see no reason why you would want to fade this move. I mean, dollar is weaker. The environment is the best environment you could even imagine ever having to do with monetary metals. I mean, it's extremely supportive of monetary metals. So, I mean, I, I can find no argument why somebody would want to be short, really. And here is silver. 
Silver has broken through the, the symmetrical triangle as well. Had a couple of days of weakness backtesting, in essence, the breakout trend line. And it seems to be uh, appreciating once again today. I don't really see much of a resistance uh, until almost $19. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we also had another friend asking for natural gas. Listen, natural gas is doing fine. It rebounded from the pivot area that, you know, we had talked about, you know, many times in the past. It's now back again in the middle of this rectangle. So, you know, from a risk reward perspective, now that we're back in the middle of this rectangle, you know, there is clearly not much you can do about it. I mean, it doesn't make much sense buying it, doesn't make much sense selling it, because the best you can you can wish for is a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So, you know, you bought it near the lows, excellent, well done. You don't have the position, you have two choices. Wait for it once again to either test your resistance or support so you can fade it, hoping that it's going to remain in the rectangle, or wait for a breakout from the rectangle, in which case you, you can then participate in, you know, in the direction of the breakout. Personally, my personal plan about natural gas is buying it once it confirms a breakout from this rectangle. Rectangle. I don't want to be short even if it breaks through support because I think that the move to the downside might be very, very short-lived. Uh, I'm not really interested in playing the range. Uh, so the only um, attractive, according to me, right? I mean, for my taste, uh, potential here is buying a breakout above 205. So that's that's the only way I'm interesting interested in uh, in playing it. But you know everybody has a different style, so I'm just. You know. Steve, do you think that the distraction of the dollar by the Fed will eventually cause the markets to drop as investors lose confidence in the U.S. currency? Uh, short question in the you, your your question continues, but let me answer very quickly in the first part of the question. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, usually when what you describe happens, uh, what we get is massive rallies in nominal prices, but not big enough to make up for the loss from the currency side. So partially you are right, meaning foreign investors are probably going to lose their confidence because if they see that there is a high chance that they're going to be losing their profits uh, by the currency devaluation, they're going to be less and less interested. Needless to say that if something like that happens, the U.S. bond market is going to seize completely. Because you understand with ridiculous yields like the, the ones that we currently have globally, I mean, who who is the foreign investor that's going to be buying treasuries, for example, to make you know, a negligible uh, return uh, for a long period of time, holding it for a long period of time, when they can lose uh, what they can make within 10 years, within literally a couple of days of dollar depreciation. So uh, the first thing that's going to happen, of course, is that the bond market is going to, to go completely out of bed and the uh, the Fed is going to be the only buyer left in the market. So, you know, it's going to own completely whatever comes out from the Treasury, whatever issuance comes out, they, they, they'll they have to buy 100.0% of it. End of story. And then, yes, uh, foreign investors are going to start losing their interest in buying U.S. stocks um, if they're afraid that, you know, the currency depreciation is not going to make up for uh, the nominal gains. Now, U.S. investors are going to be more or less, you know, uh, remain invested. Um, and, you know, the stock market in nominal terms are going to be doing great, is going to be doing great. Uh, but, you know, not, not in real terms. I mean, if you look at Venezuelan uh, stock market, for example, it, it, it went vertical. But, you know, the, uh, the value of the currency, I mean, went to the trash can. So um, now... Is that easy to happen with the U.S. as long as the dollar is the, you know, the world reserve currency? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's not easy to see such a move in the dollar. I do think that the dollar is going to depreciate a lot, 
but I don't think it's going to be happening probably in a disorderly manner. I mean, it, it's going to be quite strong, but it's not going to be in a way that people are going to be, you know, uh, running out of the doors like, you know, the building caught on fire or something. So, um, you know, that's that's what I believe. Now, the second part of your question is, seems the dollar is doomed to go much lower as the US has proven to be the biggest currency manipulator the world has seen. Yeah, I agree with you. The question is when. Um, for the time being, uh, you know, it's it's doing okay. I mean, it has been moving lower and I think it will continue to move lower. But, you know, the move is, you know, very, very orderly so far. And I would say rather slow. Uh, I don't think we have any more time to cover questions. I almost heard the guitar there. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it, huh? Yeah, I did. I did. Right. I did miss it. Yeah, I mean, I had, to, I had to go solo every day. <laughs> day you, you owe me. <laughs> All right, buddy. I know. I owe you plenty. Anyway, so we have Tracy uh, with us today, right? Yeah. Yeah, Tracy's here. Okay. It's going to be nice hearing her voice. Okay. So, uh, Tracy, welcome back. I'm going to get you set up now <clears throat> as a panelist and wait for you to pop up here. And I'm asking you to unmute. Welcome back, my trading warrior sister. Hello, how are you guys? Good, good to be back. Uh, we're good, Hello. and what a, what a great day to have you. Yeah, definitely. So uh, um, you don't share a screen, so I'll share mine, right? Yes, correct. Okay, and we just go through the, we'll cover the board together, Tracy. Appreciate you being here, so I'm going to share my screen. Why don't we start off with WTI, Trace? I'm taking a shot here. Um, I thought that uh, with the spoos up 54 handles that so far um, the response in WTI has been kind of muted. What are you thinking here in the energy patch? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're looking a little bit stretch um, here and kind of, you know, as you said, the market reaction, you know, we haven't really, um, gone up as much as the SPU has. And that's partly for fundamental reasons. Um, refining margins are so poor right now that it's kind of keeping a cap really on, on WTI. I mean, if you've noticed, we've kind of been in that, you know, like 30. $3 range. Like, yeah, like that $3 range for a while, which is good actually, because, you know, I mean, OPEC, and, OPEC basically wanted to stabilize the oil market. And, they kind of have, but um, just the funny was it o was it OPEC or the Fed Trace uh, that stabilized for, the? <laughs> <laughs> I, I pick one. I don't know. All right. Um, maybe, maybe but both. yeah. So I mean, right now, I think what you know, I think we're just in consolidation mode. I don't see foresee anything really right now that's going to cause you know a major spike in 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 oil prices. Um, you know, looking out to the future, I do see because of all the CapEx cuts, and this is kind of more of on a macro level, you know, because of all the CapEx cuts um, and consolidations and bankruptcies, you know, I definitely think we see an inflationary uh, oil spike, but that's not out until 2021. Um, in the meantime, I think, you know, right now, really, we're just in consolidation zone, and I don't really see... Uh, big catalyst for any kind of big move up to the upside right right now as, as it stands right now you know i kind of have a, a level i'm eyeballing down around the 30 to 28 dollar level um you know based upon the kind of rally that we had in the first bounce before we went negative uh is that um a little aggressive for a narrative yeah. to maybe see a ten dollar break in gold in, in oil <laughs> Um, I mean, per, just because of everything so buoyed right now by the Fed and everything that it's possible. I mean, I thought we would see a bigger pullback already, but, yeah. you know, we'll possibly see that heading into um, heading into the fall where it's typically um, a softer market anyway for okay. uh, the oil industry. But, you know, I definitely can see, you know, 30, 35 is definitely possible. Okay. Uh, appreciate that view and uh, anything fundamentally um, 
China wise, uh, uh, China's uh, their equity markets exploding. So uh, yeah, I guess apparently, yeah. apparently Nomura put out a, a, a note yesterday, I guess during their whatever that basically said, um, get out of US equities and get into Chinese equities because of uh, the unrest and the virus and everything in um, it going on in the US. So I guess they're yeah. flipping all their customers over to Chinese stocks. Yeah, U.S. becoming a pariah makes your move to uh, Canada look prescient. So uh, I wish I was up there with you and I saw that beautiful picture. Yeah, just keep a room open for me, okay? And you got uh, it. <laughs> all right. And, uh, you know, I want to congratulate you. Uh, I want to go to the dollar index now. And, uh, you know, uh, what's great about Twitter is you really make. Uh, you have some great relationships and when people see you commenting on something, they actually provide input. And you did down here, Trace, if you see my screen, uh, you were talking about 96 and then 95.60 and uh, that was a great call. That was a low of the dollar. I know that your uh, dollar bull or at least a Euro bear, uh, this right. action today, does it, uh, what's going to flip you from being a Euro bear to a Euro bull? Do you need 114 or um, what are you thinking here? I mean, it's not really a technical level. I'm actually looking at more fundamental levels, you know, and something to keep an eye on is, you know, the, I guess, the, what, the 17th and 18th, they have their meeting on, um, the EU has their meeting on, you know, on, on this stimulus bill, um, you know, that's something I'm watching. Obviously, if that passes and it and it looks good, that will be bullish for the euro. But if it doesn't, that's pretty bearish. Um, but my view on that is more macro view. So you know, uh, you know, this pullback in the dollar does not change my my views at this point. Okay. All right. So uh, kind of uh, uh, do you, when you have a fundamental view, uh, do you have levels uh, that you might be interested in building a short position in Euro then, or you're just gonna wait for the meeting, see what the ECB does oh, Yeah, I'm just gonna wait for, for, for the meeting. And actually, I haven't actually, I've actually been uh, been in dollar index futures. Okay. EXF, um, I haven't really been in the Euro lately, although, I, I mean, I switched back and forth, but lately I've just been okay. in uh, dollar futures. Okay, so I, I was kind of thinking, I don't know about you, but you know, uh, the weak dollar has been constructive or at least uh, for risk. And um, you know, now that I'm looking at S&Ps up here, I don't know if you wanted to comment on it, but uh, you know, we all know what the NASDAQ did, right? It's been a moonshot, it's parabolic, it's at new highs, but it took all of that strength in, um, NASDAQ for us finally to take out the high, the June 20th high in S&Ps. I'm wondering right. uh, if you're just uh, as amazed as a lot of people who thought after the COVID crash that we'd have fib retracements and then pull back. And, you know, we're not that far away from um, the recent recovery high of 3220. Any view on right. what's happening I mean in the equity market? I mean, I think it's, I think NASDAQ is crazy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, okay. really, and, but it's, you know, it's all of about, about six, six stocks that are keeping it, uh, you know, at a slingshot, yeah. which is, you know, just because their market cap is so big and because they're weighted so heavily in, in, like in that this? index. Like Amazon, uh, you know, everyone right. buying things online, Amazon making new highs. Um, you know, Google, Microsoft, yeah. right. Apple. Yeah. You know, Apple has uh, kind of shifted from being the strongest technically to being the weakest technically. Just something I'm seeing with uh, new highs, if we make new highs that we're not confirming on a lot of time frames. But so uh, basically it's a stand aside for you. Uh, do you have a view on, on equities uh, similar to I mean, well, I, crude? Maybe it waits till the fall to correct. Yeah, I think maybe closer to the election, election fears, you know, yeah. that come in. Yeah. And if, if you kind of look at um, the VIX curve, you'll kind of see a kink in November. So I think that, uh, you know, I think that's going to be kind of a contentious time for for volatility and for, for stocks as kind of we get closer to 
um, closer to the election. What are people thinking up there across the border uh, about U.S. elections? Uh, what's a talk of uh, possible? I, I mean, the polls are favoring Biden, but who knows? Uh, I mean, you know, I think everybody here just stands back and just watches. They, you are know, you guys I mean, amazed at how uh, the U.S. has mismanaged uh, the COVID uh, problem here? Because you guys up in Canada have it pretty much uh, well contained compared to us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Quebec was the hardest hit, but not, nothing close to. You Do you know. guys, are you guys wearing masks up there? Um, actually, we don't. It's not mandatory, no. Most people don't. Okay. Here. Yeah, so, and uh, can U.S. citizens, are we barred from your country like we are from uh, Europe and other places? Yes, the border is closed so okay, far. Okay, well, I have to cancel our date then, Friday. <laughs> I can't get there, Tracy. It's not my fault. It's yours. <laughs> It's true. Right the border, huh? They just extended the border closed down till the end of July. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, OK, well, we'll have to reschedule. God, I was so looking forward to it. And uh, <laughs> I want to I, I know. Are, are you looking at crypto? Do you pay attention to crypto at all, Trace? I really don't. I'm, That's OK. I, I'm I feel like yeah. if I'm, I, yeah, everybody is. I'm late to the game. I probably should look into it more i just i haven't any yeah, view on your yeah i know you know i i can trade it because a chart is a chart but when i try and understand blockchain i'm a blockhead so you know i really it's hard for me to own anything that i really don't understand uh right. you have a view on you have a view on your local currency uh canada with what's happening in energy does it still look negative to you so, yeah i mean i think i mean i obviously you know um oil you know up at 40 still is you know helping keep a bid on uh pad it's the same with gold gold right because it's kind of yeah. a commodity currency we have a lot of mining here um right so that currently is helping keep a bid and, and you know a little bit of dollar weakness um but in bigger picture you know if, if things don't change fundamentally, I think that will still present a uh, weakness for CAD. And gold, um, uh, you know, some Elliotitians are saying that we're entering a ending diagonal, which, you know, the key word in here is ending. Do you think that the precious metal trade is too crowded, um, that, uh, you know, could be vulnerable, especially uh, since you are looking for a stronger dollar down the line, do you think a stronger dollar is going to cap uh, this precious metal advance? Do you think that would be the catalyst? You know, I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, only because of all the uncertainty right now. So even you have, you know, indices bid. And even when we had, you know, even when dollar was, you know, just had that recent leg up to what, 97, 8, um, yeah. or whatever it was. I mean, gold stayed pretty well bid because i think right now it's a yeah. you know flight to safety trade it's a totally different kind of trade you have so much uncertainty in the world right now that yeah. i don't think it's being as affected um you know I, I don't think it's having the same correlation that it used to have right you know you know something i've noticed i'm sure you have too is that the market has become so binary here's s and p's up here's oil up here's gold up <laughs> so uh you know it's almost like uh everything is going up together the only difference is magnitude have you ever right. seen a market where there's so little differentiation between different asset classes that they're all uh, no, inflating or deflating together <laughs> No, it's crazy. And it's, you know, and I think part, partially because of, you know, what the Fed is doing because of so much liquidity that's slushing around and literally everything's good. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, um, no. You know, China, uh, Nomura came out and said by China today. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I'm always interested in how people from other countries view what we're doing and the rhetoric around China has been pretty intense coming from the US, uh, you know, with the Hong new law in uh, Hong Kong and even before that, 
with uh, sanctions putting being put on people and uh, guys like Peter Navarro saying that uh, COVID was weaponized and uh, China sent agents in here to infect Americans. Uh, if there's anything that I worry about on the election is where we're headed from with China. I mean, we've been in a cold war, um, but it seems like I hear I hear drum beats that uh, worry me. Uh, what what are people saying about uh, uh, the U.S. and China? And is Canada drifting the same way? That a lot yeah, of the U.S. old allies are drifting more towards alliance and connections with China than with the U.S.? Well, China has its own problems with Canada and vice versa, right? We've got Meng, Hawaii, right? Yeah. She's, yeah. We're about right. to extradite her. Um, they've got okay. two of our two of Canada's journalists locked up. Um, you know, now they just both issued travel warnings against their countries. You know, China's kind of... To me, it's very strange because China's lashing out everywhere right now to everybody, Australia, Canada, um, some, not, not the U.S. so much, uh, you know, believe it or not, but um, which is kind of on and they're, they, you know, they have 22 land disputes going on with 22 different countries. It seems yeah. right now that they're lashing out at, at a bunch of countries, which seems um uncharacteristic of them right they usually play the long game they're slow moving they don't you know usually react too quickly so this is i think we're kind of seeing a, kind of a change here um you know within china and how how they're reacting to situations and where that leads I, i'm not sure you know i've heard there's dissent within the party i've heard you know i've heard a lot of things about it but you know it's just something to keep an eye on because it, it's definitely uncharacteristic of that country okay interesting that it is and uh yeah i didn't know about the situations with journalists from your country also being uh jailed by them uh was there anything else that you and i didn't touch upon asset class wise that you would like to comment on Oh, uh, no. I mean, I guess, you know, we could talk about grains here. If you look oh, okay, at yeah. uh, okay. soybeans so... are, are surging this morning. I, I don't know, like, the, the we're supposed to have a, you know, 100 degree plus weather in the plains for the next two weeks, right after we just had floods all during the spring. So that's maybe, you know, something to watch or, you know, perhaps a trade idea. Um, in yeah, you the, can't eat gold. Grain comp and the grain complex. And soybeans are called uh, pro uh, uh, protein gold. So, uh, you know, the color of it. So, so uh, yeah, uh, you know, that would uh, kind of line up with everything that's going on. Uh, you know, pandemic, uh, famine next, uh, some type right, of grain. Right, why not? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, China's having trouble with their crop and their wheat crop. They have right. some type of army worm or something. So, and, and I, you know, it's great you brought up the grains. They're very good technical markets. Uh, I used to trade them a lot. Uh, do you trade them? Um, occasionally, yes. Okay. I usually trade the, the coin, corn market if I'm going to trade any grains. Okay. All right. So, uh, Grains look good to Tracy, and uh, you know we could have some type of uh, pullback. And you maintain your bullish stance on the dollar, but you yeah. really don't have any levels. You're going to wait for the ECB meeting mid month to make any decisions on that. Right, exactly. I mean, right now I'm just saying. I mean, it's you know, right now I'm just. I'm actually not in any currency market at, at the current time. I'm. Kind of you know, and out. as we talk, uh, my crude position's working. You see, you brought me some good luck today. To me, there it looks go. like, Trace, uh, we have kind of a rising wedge here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rule on wedges is, you know, I think we could fail, especially if we get any risk off in the market, to back to these levels. Don't you think 34 is realistic, the bottom of yeah, the Yeah, I mean, really, um, I think really right now, um, the 36 sevens where it's going to get sticky but if we get below that then that's right here um, yeah then you know definitely so i'd watch that 37 area if we can get uh below that then i definitely think we could you know continue on into um, the lower 30s okay and uh, i'm going to pull up uh, your website shygirl.com it kind of looks like a little bit of a blog spot and yeah. you do some writing here 
Okay, Occasionally. That, I, I haven't yeah. kept it up, so, you know. Okay. You're too busy on Twitter and trading, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, okay. I haven't, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't kept it up. I usually do if, like, something, you know, big happens. But Okay. All right. Well, uh, get to it. We need you out there. There's so All much right. uh, baloney out there uh, that, you know, we need an educated eye, especially in these times. And I want to thank you for being with us today, Tracy. I recommend that everyone becomes a follower of yours and it's at shy G R L. And you could follow Tracy on Twitter and uh, she covers a gamut. Uh, you, you know, you're commenting on things. Uh, I really enjoy your feed and appreciate you and uh, you coming here and thank you for letting me pick your brain and edify our community today, Tracy. Absolutely, it's always a pleasure. All I right. love, love talking to you guys. Good, good hunting, Trace. All right, and, thanks. Uh, I, we'll get something going in the fall, all right? Perfect. All right, everyone, Tracy Schubert, and uh, you could follow her at Shy Girl on Twitter. And that's gonna be a wrap for us, everyone. Uh, we'll see you all back tomorrow for uh, Turnaround Tuesday. And I want to thank everyone for being with us. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And let me just look for the place to end the meeting. <laughs> All right. So that's going to be a wrap. Pause recording. Okay, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. <laughs>